Okay. So today we are working on small group. This is our only small group today uh, lesson. So we get to <laughs> chapters nine and ten today. Chapters nine and ten. Uh, the quizzes are almost straight from the book. You need to know about if you want to look at your at, at your textbook from chapter nine. The difference between teams and groups, which we're going to talk about today. Types of groups. Group norms. Problem solving groups. There's a long section on problem solving groups. From chapter 10, group roles. Leadership styles and leadership types. Okay? If you went to Dead Man's cell phone and you wanted to get extra credit for that, please send me an email. I did already. I know. Send it again. I did. I, I am behind on that. I've got the Messiah stuff that I need to grade, so I'm, I need to do some catching up, and I will do that. <coughs> so, any questions about any of that? That's what's coming up. That's what's coming up. So paper there two are two quizzes. Two. Paper two is due on Thursday. Okay. Two quizzes. Two quizzes. Both of them uh, are open now. And quiz. I, what I would recommend that you do is get your paper two written, take quiz nine, take quiz ten. In that order. And everything will be open until Saturday. Nine and ten will be open until Saturday. I don't know about eight. I'll have to look. I thought because last week you told me we were going to do chapter eight until this week. I think chapter eight is open. Okay, so if you haven't done eight, do eight, nine, and ten. Quizzes eight, nine, and ten. I haven't graded seven yet. If you need any special consideration, I want you to do well. If you need special consideration, if you need some time to get a paper done, if you want to go back and do something that you did not do well or you didn't do, let me know. We're headed toward the final stages of this class, which is the informative speech. But for now, we're going to do group work, and we're going to start by watching a short video. Many of us don't like to be in groups because they end up the way this one ended up. They end up with, with screaming and yelling whenever conflict comes. Now, you've been through some of the conflict stuff. Was this a conflict about relationship or about substance? Why do you say that, Melody? Do you say relationship? I feel like he feels as if he's not respected enough, and so that plays into the okay. relationship. Right. And what else, what else can we say about his relationship to women? He doesn't see them as equal. Now, is it possible that some other woman might be seen as equal? Yeah. He doesn't like this particular woman. That's, that's real clear. So he generalizes to, to all women. And how does, the, how does the conflict end up? How does the conflict get solved? He quits. he quits. How many of you have been in a group where one of the people in the group who ended up in conflict with the rest of the group just quit? Usually not with this kind of, not with this kind of drama. They just never showed up again. <laughs> you know, it was that kind of passive-aggressive quitting that said, I don't like where you're going, I'll never show up again. And for this reason, many of us don't like groups, but we're all part of groups, whether we want to be or not. Most of us are part of groups that are known as teams, right? How many of you are on a team? Now, let me, I, I asked this before, but how many of you consider yourself to be part of a team? Cece, you didn't raise your hand. I guess choir counts. Choir is a team. Yeah. Orchestra is a team. What's the difference between just a small group and a team? What's the difference between a small group and a team? Hmm? No, the, the, the textbook talks about the size of a small group as being from three to about 11. Now, I count small groups slightly larger. I, I would count from, from three or four up to about 15. 
as a small group. So most teams are bigger than that, right? How many on the football team? 94. How many on the how many on the softball team? No, it's like 23. 23. How many on the baseball team? <laughs> Somebody how many on the baseball team somewhere in the 20s? Yeah. Tennis, men's tennis? 14 to 15, women's tennis? Six. Six. <laughs> it should be about 14 to 15, but it's about six. Bas women's basketball? 18. Um, and there's going to be some turnover. So that's one of, the things about, one of the things about a team is that the turnover is built into the team's life. One of the other major differences between a team and a small group has to do with goal making. Who sets your goals? On the basketball team, who sets the goals? The coach. coach. On softball, who sets the goal who sets the goals? Um, we have lots of goals and so we came up with them all together. Very it's good. So a very de democratic sort of does the coach give you any direction toward those goals? Yeah. yeah. Oh, are there are there agreed upon goals that are that the the team doesn't even have to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the goals of every team is win. 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 You don't go out there to lose. No. Even the worst team has to have in the back of their head, we could win this one. It's over. On any day, at any time, we could win this one. We may be 0 and 22, but it's got to it's got to end sometime. So that's one of the major differences. Small group. Does a small group have a goal? Absolutely. Small groups have goals. If they don't have goals, they run into problems. And the biggest problem they run into is they stop existing. Small groups, sororities, fraternities, clubs, the newspaper, the yearbook, if they don't have an agreed upon goal, they cease to function. But the true small group is not given goals, it discovers or creates the goal. And you can, you can take any number of people, any group of people, and if you are clever and if you can understand what's going on in their heads, you can turn them into a small group. So for example, in Chicago, a lot of people ride the bus or the L. And if you ride the bus or the L every day from the same stop at the same time, you start to run into the same people. In fact, when I was riding the L in Chicago, I would begin to recognize some folks. I'd even had, know some of them. I'd know some names. How do you turn a group of commuters into a small group? Whether it's a car commuter, or it's a bus commuting group, or it's a, or, or it's a platform waiting for the subway, how would you turn them into a small group? Communicating. You gotta communicate. What are you gonna communicate? Hmm? Well, that's where, but what kind of thing do you want to communicate to turn just this amalgam of people into a group? You're going to start with some small talk. You're going to build some relationships. You're going to get into some interpersonal stuff. And then what? Somewhere along the way, the group has to develop a compelling, cohesive identity. And that comes from having a compelling goal. So that if our goal is just to get to work, that kind of, is that compelling? No. But if our goal is to get the local transit authority to lower fares, because our daily commute costs too much. That's likely to, if we can agree upon that, that's likely to become compelling. 
or as you recall from New York City election, uh, mayoral election, there was a there was a candidate who ran on the rent too damn high platform, and he ran on the rent too damn high party. He was a very interesting guy. He's got a little goatee. He always wears gloves. Um, the rent's too damn high, and he managed to create a group. It wasn't big enough to win an election. But it, for our purposes, he created a group. It's a compelling goal and a compelling identity. Why do people wear uh, t-shirts from various teams? Compelling identity. Those are things you need to have a group. The, the team also has a compelling identity, but the team is given its goal rather than finding its goal. The softball team is the exception. We have to expect that any group of women is more likely to be exception to the given a goal, develop a goal. Women are much better negotiators, much better collaborators. Within the life of a group, and we're going to skip now to an item in chapter 10. Within the life of a group, people play many roles. People play many roles. And you don't just play one role, unless it's a fairly large group, you tend to play multiple roles. A leader needs not only to be sure of his or her style as a leader in leadership. And uh, Taryn, what kind of leader would you be? <laughs> Transformation. This is a very popular style of leadership. Kate, where do you see yourself as a leader? I don't know. I kind of got all truths except for one. And that puts you where? No, they're Various, all true. Okay. An all-around leader. An all-around leader. Yeah. You don't think you have some authoritarian? <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. I want things my way. Okay. Authoritarian leadership is important when you are trying to get out of a burning building. You do not have a group meeting in a fire. <laughs> it is important when you are running a, a patrol out on the edge of Afghanistan. But there is still plenty of room for democracy in that situation. And I, there's a speech by General Stanley McChrystal that really talks about how democracy can fit into the army life. It's a very interesting speech. Um, I think I've got it linked on our site, but I'm not absolutely sure. Leadership is something that most of you are going to be called upon to give. You are college graduates. You are the people to whom everyone else looks for leadership. If you want to earn a salary above the norm, you've got to take leadership responsibility within your job. You've got to look for it and take it. If you're going to be a follower all your life, count on being down the totem pole and not having, not ha having neither a great wage nor a great job. If you're willing to step up, and be a leader and accept the stress, you're going to earn more, you're going to be respected, you're going to take, you're going to take a role in creating the society that we desperately need. Okay? Leadership is very important. All of you, all of you have potential as leaders. The quietest among us, Miss Ashley. The quietest among us, Mr. Mike, to the one who is always forward, Mr. Stephen. You all have potential as leaders. And leadership is not something that you're born with. It's something that you learn how to do. And you learn how to do it by stepping up and taking leadership when it's asked of you. All right, just to go over real quickly, due dates. Due dates. Okay, we're looking at quizzes. First, quiz eight was only open until the 20th. I will reopen it because a number of you haven't taken.
taken it. I will reopen it right okay. now. Mm -hmm. Quiz 8, chapter 8, is now open until Thursday at 11 o'clock. Okay. You said chapter 9 is open until Friday at 11 o'clock. Chapter 10, Saturday at 11 o'clock. Okie dokie. And the writing? Writing 2. Open until Thursday at 11 o'clock. The prompt for writing 2 is on our front part, so we can't get there. The preparation outline. We need to be reading chapters 11, 12, and 13. Thursday we start on speech. The preparation outline is due the 3rd of May. We speak the 8th and 10th of May, the last two days of class. Right. Got it? Those are the last two days without the final. Huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.